Hello and welcome to my next video on equilibrium. So with equilibrium we have Kc which is known as the equilibrium constant. So you've seen K which is the rate constant and now this is the equilibrium constant, one of many constants you learn about in A2. Now Kc basically states that if you have a reaction equilibrium such as a a plus b b goes to c c plus d d k c can be found out by working out the concentration of the products to the power of the coefficient over the concentration of the reaction to the power of the coefficients so as you can see little a big a is on the bottom because it's a reactant little b big b is on the bottom and then little c big c and little d big d are on the top because they're the products and then the little c is to the power. So if you had, for example, 2NO2, you'd put concentration, square bracket, NO2, close bracket, to the power of 2. I'll give an example here. N2O4 is in equilibrium with 2NO2. Now I said both of them are at 0 0.2 mole per dm cubed. Wasn't the best choice to have both at the same, but it works. So Kc equals the concentration of NO2 squared, because it's the product and there's 2 in front of the um, NO2 over N2O4. Now if you put now you put the concentration in which is 0 0.2 mole per dm cubed so you have 0 0.2 squared over 0 0.2 and that equals 0 0.2. Units you work out just the same you did with a rate constant. So concentration is measured in mole per dm cubed so you have mole per dm cubed squared over mole per dm cubed which becomes mole per dm cubed. So the Kc for this reaction is 0 0.2 mole per dm cubed and also Kc can have no units. If it was just, you know, NO2 to the power of 1 over N2O4 to the power of 1, the units cancel out. Now, calculating equilibrium amounts. You might be asked to, well, you might be given some starting concentration which are added into an equilibrium mixture and a final um, volume or molar amount of at the end of equilibrium. They will also give a volume of the whole container. So in this case, 0 0.6 moles of hydrogen is added with 0 0.4 moles of iodine. That's a start. In a 1 per dm cubed uh, volume container. After the, rea after the uh, reactants have reached equilibrium, hydrogen has 0 0.28 moles. The equation is H2 plus I2 becomes 2HI. So this is what we do. I've, I've labelled it with letters so you know which order I've done it in. So here's the table. We have start, end, and unlike the book, I also had a lost thing, just, just so it helps a little bit. So start, you put, write in your starting mounts in moles. 0 0.6 moles of hydrogen, 0 0.4 moles of iodine, 0 moles of hydrogen iodide. Then in the end, B, you're told you have 0 0.28 moles of hydrogen. Now I do C next. Now if you look, you started with 0 0.6, you finish with 0 0.28 moles of hydrogen. That means you've lost 0 0.32 moles of hydrogen. You then look at the equation. It's a one-to-one -one molar ratio between hydrogen and iodine. So 0 0.32 moles of iodine will also have been lost. Then you add the two amounts lost Actually, no, so sorry, sorry, firstly, you can then work out the end amount for iodine. You start with 0 0.4, you lost 0 0.32, so you finish with 0 0.08. So, you know you lost 0 0.32 moles of hydrogen and 0 0.32 moles of iodine. So you add those two together, so you've ended with 0 0.64 moles of hydrogen iodide. And then, now remember, most of all thing, this is in moles. You want concentrations. So... In this case, it's one, one dm cubed. You've got number of moles. Moles divided by the volume basically means that the concentration is equal to the moles, but just with a different unit. But remember, concentration equals moles divided by volume. Kc. Now, we've already talked about what Kc is, but we look at Kc at a different point. What does the value of Kc actually mean? When Kc equals 1, it means there's an equal amount of reactants and products. The position of equilibrium is halfway between the reactants and the products. If Kc is less than 1, so even just like 0 
I've just chosen some random values here. It doesn't have to be this ratio, but I've just chosen it to show. Their equilibrium will shift to the reactants. There'll be more reactants than products. If Kc is bigger than 1, the opposite will happen. It will shift to the products, so there'll be more products than reactants. Now, how does temperature affect Kc? Now, as temperature increases, it will always favour the endothermic side. So if the Ford reaction is endothermic, as temperature increases, the position of equilibrium will shift that way. If temperature decreases and the reaction is end and the Ford reaction is endothermic, it will shift backwards to the exothermic side. So basically, as temperature increases, it position of equilibrium shifts to the endothermic side. As temperature decreases, position of equilibrium shifts to the exothermic side. So what does this mean for Kc? Now, this can be a little bit confusing, but essentially, if the Ford reaction is endothermic, as temperature increases, Kc will also increase. If the Ford reaction is exothermic and temperature increases, Kc will decrease. Now, this is because as temperature increases, it will favour the endothermic side, so it will shift backwards to the endothermic side. If the Ford reaction is endothermic and temperature decreases, Kc will decrease, because this time it's shifting it's shifting backwards to the exothermic side. If the Ford reaction is exothermic and the temperature decreases, Kc will, Kc will increase because the Ford reaction is exothermic and it will shift that way. So essentially, if the, re if the reaction is going to be favoured backwards, Kc will decrease. If the reaction is favoured forwards, Kc will increase. Now some other factors. If concentration changes, Kc is constant. If pressure changes, Kc is constant. If a catalyst is added, Kc is constant. It doesn't change. Kc only changes with temperature. Now to explain that. Now you need to remember here, because they will, they will ask this from Unit 2, the Chatelier's principle. That is, when a system is in dynamic equilibrium, or when a system in dynamic equilibrium is subject to change, the position of equilibrium will shift to minimise that change. So, concentration, first one. If you have if you have the early equation we looked at, which is N204 to 2NO2, now if let's say you increase the concentration of N2O4, so the, the reactant, more product will form to minimize that change. KC is KC is constant. This is because think of it like this. Let's say you have um, product is one mole per dm cube con and then um, the uh, product and reactant are one mole per dm cubed. So one divided by one, or in this case, one, one squared divided by one is one. So that's KC in this case. It's always going to be one. Now if you increase the concentration of the um, reactant to 2, you've then got 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5, so Kc is decreased. You can't have that. So the concentration of NO2 will also decrease. So you end up getting the same ratio, so Kc equals 1. So essentially, any changes of concentration will change the concentration of the other thing, so Kc is constant. Pressure, same thing with pressure. If you add more pressure, the the uh, position of equilibrium will shift to the side that has let fewer moles of gas. And that's just, that's just a AS knowledge. And that's again to keep Kc constant. Same with cat well, catalyst, just has no effect at all on anything to do with equilibrium. All it does is increase the reaction. It doesn't change how much product or reactant is formed, only the speed at which it is done. So Kc only changes with temperature. And that is that. Thank you for watching. So in conclusion, Kc is products to the power of P over reactants to the power of R. Kc is only affected by temperature and remember Le Chatelier's principle. So thank you for watching. Any questions as usual, email me or leave a comment. Uh, like, subscribe, rate, blah, 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 blah. So thank you for watching and goodbye.